Hey lads, uh, just gonna make a quick video on, I suppose, some of my ideas on how we can make the most of the time that we have. If you're like us here in Ireland, we're in lockdown, so we can't get near a golf club or we can't uh, go to our usual facilities. And a lot of us are stuck inside practicing on something like this here, like a mat indoors or something along those lines. I've gotten a good few messages from people asking me, like, well, what's the best? Like, what should I do? How should I practice? Um, because it can kind of like it can get a little bit monotonous when we're just on a flat surface it's the same thing over and over again what could we do so but there's always different ways and i think like one of the big things is that if the environment doesn't provide a challenge for us we have to challenge ourselves so i'm going to go through a couple of things i've reached out to a few different people to get their thoughts on it. and this is kind of like a sample routine of what I think a decent session would look like in these current circumstances. Okay, so the first one, um, it, it's a really good time to work in technique because we have no upcoming tournaments and uh, we're not we're not burdened by the fact of shit. Like I hope this works and I'll be I hope that like I'll, it'll be a good next by next week or the week after that, the week after that. So if there, are, if there are any technical pieces in your game that you want to work on or in your stroke. Now's a really good time to do it, and you can do it unburdened by performance um, in upcoming tournaments. So that's the first piece. So you might start off your session. I've got like a, a Visio mat here, I've got a mirror here, I pick whichever one I'm working on, and I might spend like 10, 15 minutes working on my technique. Now's a really good time to do some movement work. So maybe a couple of slow mos, really working on the patterns I'm looking to see in my stroke. If I'm on the mirror, it might be maybe some setup work, really nailing down where I want to be. So that might take up 10, 15 minutes of your time, take some videos, face on down the line or whatever. And then I would do, because the environment isn't challenging, I would try and make it challenging for myself. So I think this is a really good time. It's something I think that's overlooked, especially in putting training, to work on some balance and coordination stuff. So what I mean by that is, I might leave my mat down, but what I might do is I might actually hit a couple of putts right hand only and see how good can I maintain my pattern with just one hand. And then I'd switch and I would do left hand only. How good can I maintain my pattern with just my left hand? Then what I might do is I might do some balance work. So I might go left foot back on its toe, hit a couple. And then what I might actually do really challenge myself would be can I hit a couple of putts just on my left foot really forcing myself to stabilize really challenging my balance I might do the same on my right leg and this is a real good one for centers and strikes so it's like <clears throat> how good can you make the quality of your strike on one foot um, so you're having a fine sweet spot even when you're being physically challenged Okay, so I might spend 10, 15 minutes on that, one hand only, left hand, right hand, then I might go right foot, left foot. Then what I might do is, if you have a set of Vizio gates, I might take out the gates. I might do a little bit on start line. And again, I might go back then to work on the start line with the right hand only. If you don't have gates, you could easily use any household light room that provides a, about a 55 mil gap to put between. So go back right hand only, left hand only. You could go one foot of two hands, one foot of two hands. You could go one foot, one hand, one foot, two hands. And that would be like my balance coordination practice. And then the next piece I'd move on to, and this is something I've spoken to a few performance coaches on a few sports sites and it's definitely something I think that we probably work on the least um, but has a huge potential for improvement so I would interlink two pieces one would be breathing and then two would be visualization or imagery or scripting in our heads how we want to be when we're at when we're performing one of the I think other sports like say swimming and stuff um, where they might have to prepare for a world championships or an Olympics, which might be every year, or every two years, or every four years. I think they do a lot. They do this much better than we do in golf because we have the opportunity to compete an awful lot more. 
um, what they do is they, 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 they use imagery visualization to put themselves where they're going to be in the coming months or years mentally when they can't actually be there physically. And that's exactly what the situation we find ourselves in now is like, we have to be able to mentally put ourselves where we're going to be, even though we can't be there physically. And then I would incorporate a little bit of what I call box breathing. Box breathing is really good for focusing our mind and um, for regulating our, our breath work and keeping our, our breathing cadence even. So what I would do is I would maybe pick out three scenarios, write them down. So imagine I've got a eight foot putt to win a tournament. I've got a seven foot putt to get into a playoff. I've got a um a ten foot putt to um win the playoff. Pick three different stars, or maybe it could even be as simple as you're playing opposite somebody. You know that they're one ahead of you. They hold out for power, and you know that you have the, you have to hold this putt, or they're going to win the tournament. Imagine the scenario. Imagine all the people around. And what you might do is you might actually while you're indoors you might close your eyes really really visualize it and then actually start talking to yourself as how would you want to be in this scenario you're like i would want to have good body language i want my breathing to be good so what i would do is before you step in to hit the putt is i would do three rounds of box breaths so three rounds of box breaths would be in in for four, hold for four, out for four, leave it out for four. So, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, leave it out for four, two, three, four, back in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. And repeat that three times. And what you should feel is you should feel yourself get really centered. Do it through your nose if you can. When you've that done, then walk in exactly as you would want to. Take your practice strokes. Set up as you normally would. Play the putt. So. What the breathing does is it teaches you to use it to regulate yourself. What the visualization does is it helps you it helps you be somewhere mentally if you can't be there physically. It also hopefully will make it more likely that you can execute in that manner when those situations arrive a little bit later in the year. And it should hopefully help us stay mentally and competitively sharp, even if we can't uh we can't be on site, we can't be at the tournaments uh, that we want to be in over the next little while. So I hope that gives you some ideas. Um, as you can imagine, I don't have much to be doing over the next like two, three weeks because we'll be in lockdown. So if anybody wants to send me any questions, send me any videos that you want me to have a look at, I'm more than happy to, um, to send back some feedback and uh, hopefully we can make the most of this time off. Okay, talk soon guys, thanks.